Northern Ireland, is it a province, is it a country? Depends on who you talk to. How did it come about? Well, you have to go back almost a century to 1920 and the UK Parliament Act, known as an act to provide for the better government of Ireland, or the Fourth Home Rule Act. Six counties make up the region which is sometimes confused with Ulster. Ulster is nine counties. It's the six Northern Ireland ones and three which are part of the Republic of Ireland. So you will hear the terms unionist and nationalist bounded about. In simple language, a unionist is someone who wants the region to remain part of the United Kingdom a nationalist wants a united Ireland as one country. So once upon a time, all of Ireland was part of the UK, established by acts of union back at the turn of the 19th century. It was in the middle of this century that we had the Irish famine, which was a terrible period of just a few years, which led to as many as a million deaths and mass emigration from Ireland. Nationalists, Irish nationalists, were active and vocal in the House of Commons in the 19th and 20th centuries, calling for home rule. The Commons passed two bills in the late 19th century granting Irish home rule within the existing political order, but the House of Lords shot these down. And it wasn't until 1911 that the powers of the Lords were curbed in a very significant way by the liberal government of the day. But anyway, historically, English rule in Ireland has a long and bloody past, with various lulls and flashpoints. The Easter Rising of 1916 is a very famous event, which is, dare I say, burnt onto the collective psyche of British and Irish alike. After the First World War, we had the Anglo-Irish War, or War of Irish Independence, which led to a ceasefire after two and a half years of fighting, and we had an Anglo-Irish Treaty, and an Irish Civil War, which lasted almost a year. The Irish Free State was established in 1922, comprising 26 out of the 32 Irish counties. The Republic of Ireland as it is today was temporarily a dominion of the British Empire. But with the passing of the Statute of Westminster, Southern Ireland, the 26 counties, became effectively a sovereign state. It wasn't until 1937 that a referendum being approved led to the Constitution of Ireland, new constitution, creating the Republic. For one reason or another, some Unionists and Nationalists opposed the partition of Ireland in the early 20s. Yeah, I'm not going to touch the religious dimensions of this here, other than to say the obvious, which is that sectarianism has been a huge driving force of tension and conflict down the decades. But yeah, the new political order in Ireland, created in 37, claimed jurisdiction over the whole 32 counties, but understood that legislation didn't apply in Northern Ireland. Flash forward to 1998. Doesn't seem 20 years ago to me. Yeah, this was an important year for Ireland, with the 19th Amendment establishing shared political institutions and an understanding that respecting democracy is key to the potential unification of Ireland. The Good Friday Agreement has clearly been successful in terms of leading to conditions of a greater peace in the region. But now, the potential fallout from the UK's impending departure from the European Union could conceivably threaten the peace process. 
and one senses that there are forces in the UK and Ireland who actually want to return to violence in the area to further their political ambitions. But for reasonable people, the hard border in Ireland scenario is very undesirable. Under the surface of a seemingly calm lake, old hatreds are still bubbling away, unfortunately. Clearly, emotions can run very high. Political mismanagement or incompetence might seem like a funny sideshow or soap opera in 2018. But, yeah, shitty management of political problems can cost people's lives. Yeah, blood can be shed about stuff like this. So, hopefully cooler heads will prevail, meaning hopefully democracy and diplomacy will prevail.